Welcome back to Micro Maintenance, the home of Wingnuts. And if you are building a Skyranger Ninja or looking to upgrade your Skyranger Ninja to the 600 kg variant, then this is the episode for you. Okay, so uh, the other day, yesterday in fact, we built one of the wings uh, for our custom Sky Ranger Ninja LS. Uh, and don't get me wrong, we wouldn't profess to be in any form of Sky Ranger experts, but we have built, repaired, shortened, and done all sorts of things to Sky Ranger wings. So when we started putting these Ninja LS wings together, uh, we noticed that there was quite a number of significant differences. And through speaking with Paul, these differences are actually the same ones that are being implemented for the new weight category for the Microlite, so uh, for the Sky Ranger specifically. So when you're looking to uprate your Sky Ranger Ninja to, say, hopefully a 600 kilogram, these are some of the parts that you're going to need to fit to your wing. So I thought not only shall we go through for those guys that are building a Ninja, but also we can go through some of the differences between a normal Sky Ranger or Sky Ranger Ninja and the LS and look at the difference on those uprated parts. Anyway, the first thing we need to do before we do absolutely anything is read the manual. So I've got my manual, I've read it once and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read it again and then I'm going to read it one more time. Okay, so with the Sky Ranger manuals, um, and this is where we become really big friends of Flylight, because I genuinely think they're a fantastic company and their after sale service is fantastic. Um, what I want to draw your attention to is the manual. So we have a number of manuals and I like having a hard copy of the manual, but when Flylight make any sort of alterations, they issue a new manual and you'll find that on the Sky Ranger website. So if you go to Flylight, click on Sky Rangers and then onto manuals, you will find uh, the updated version. Now I'm on version 1.4 H. This is the one that came with uh, the kit. But when we noticed some of the differences and we were trying to clarify, um, the correct way uh, uh, of the bolts. We went on to the Sky Ranger website and they are currently, at the time of this recording, on version 1.4i. And I actually found that there were some better pictures and drawings and photographs uh, in that manual that are in this manual that really, really did aid. So the manual, the manual, the manual is always the way forward, but bear in mind that there might be better explanations or better pictures and so keeping a hyperlink to the Flylight website won't be a bad thing. Okay, so I've read through the manual and what I'm happy to do at this stage is do what we always do at Micro Maintenance and do mock-up. The last thing you want to do is go straight into making permanent fixings, drilling holes, lock tighting things up. So we're purely going to go into mock-up phase. Um, I've identified the tubes, so we have SKR 49, SKR 50. There's a lot, if I show you this, this is uh, what I love about Flylight. Most of the bolts have already come through in the correct orientation, the way that they should be built. And that's great because it gives you a, a good indicator uh, of the way things should be. But again, always compare it to the manual because we all have the odd bad day. Now, we're looking specifically for these tubes. These are the tubes that are like the braces of the ladder. These are the strengthening between the leading edge and the trailing edge. Now, uh, the round ones that we got here are SK th SKR 37. Now, they're easy identifiable. They're two tubes that look to be the same length. They look to be the same fitting. They probably are, and I'm pretty sure that they are the same tube. But we're also looking for this other one, which in some manuals was SK34, but now might be SK54. So again, very kindly Flylight have marked up the tube. 
and this is what threw me out of when I first saw it because it's oval but it's meant to be oval so don't be too concerned when you look at it and think that it's been crushed or maybe there's been a manufacturing issue it's meant to be oval so what I'm going to do is place these out a few hints and tips that I will give you when you are working on wings is give yourself a really big surface area to work in this is our bench it's a nice working height it's flat you can use uh, some trestles that's fine uh, I've done that before you can use the floor uh, but when you reach a certain age the floor becomes a, a very long way away doesn't it so I like to work at this height um, the other thing is make sure you get your orientation right because the manual will be in one orientation so it's very easy uh, to get the wing upside down in relationship to the manual so make sure that you're getting the tubes in the right orientation and also make sure you're building a um, halves a halved pair uh, I am aware of people that have built two port wings because they follow the manual and then they followed the manual again so my advice would be follow the manual for your first one and then do the handed pair uh, for the other side it should be a lot easier right so what we're going to do is just have a quick layout I'm going to get all of this packaging off um, lay everything out the way it should be make sure there's no damage to the tubes because now is a good time to discover that um, and like I say we're going to get the uh, the ladder the the wing ladder um, all sort of mocked up and make sure we're happy without particularly using any tools nothing should be tightened so it should all be finger tight at this stage right I'll see you in a minute so it's important when you're removing the protective covering the the foam that comes with these is not to score down with your with your Stanley knife I hope I didn't need to uh, point that one out very very carefully just cutting and removing and as you're working through you'll notice that there are varying bolts that should be in a certain orientation and it'd be worth having a good look either at another sky range that might be in your hangar or really getting to grips on why those bolts are there in the first place so as an example uh, these ones here are for the jury struts so these will attach to this wing is this is the bottom side and this is the top side so I have this wing upside down so that the um, the jewelry struts will fit into here in this orientation and if you look down the tube you can see where I've got the uh, the main struts their brackets are also facing in the right way so I'm trying to keep everything in the correct orientation another thing that's worth bearing in mind is this bracket that's down here and so varying uh, two brackets I've got this little tab now we'll come back onto this but this should be orientated to the top so if this is loose we don't want it on the underside this will need to be on the top so get everything in the right orientation make sure you're happy and then we'll go into mock-up okay so that's pretty much mock-up complete for the tubes you can see everything's still nice and loose there's nothing tight in any way but now we're in a form if we were the other way around when it's resting on these brackets uh, that are here it can make it quite awkward to get these tubes in place but now we're in mock-up what we can go to do is turn it the right way up so down will be down because we've got some messing around to do at this end so now we're looking at doing the prep ready for bolting this thing up nice and tight so now we mock the tubes up the next thing we're going to do is mock the cables up uh, and this is where we get to see the first of one of the major uh, and significant upgrades and the difference between the LS, uh, the Ninja LS wing um, and a standard Ninja wing um, the, the difference is quite obvious so I'll just go and open this packaging up here be very careful not to nick the cable we don't want to go and cause ourselves an expensive mishap in our excitement to rig the wing So the difference on these cables is huge. You take a look at that and compare that to the trailing edge cable. See the difference in the two? Now in a current Sky Range or a Ninja, you would have two cables that are this thickness. But you can see the difference on that one. Now we have two cables. Uh, one that is got the swaged ends on and another one that has the turnbuckle end so first thing we're going to do is fit this one in making sure it goes over the top so the orientation now 
is that the underside here is uh, the bottom and this is the top side so we're making sure that this goes over the top And then the other cable with the turnbuckle, slacken that right off at this time, goes on next. So that the turnbuckle cable goes over the top of the other cable. Okay, so mock-up's complete. Um, I'm happy with everything as it is, so I'm happy to go and start tightening up uh, some of the bolts. Um, it's worth at this point bearing in mind um, why certain things are there so we'll come on to this bracket uh, and why that's there when we, we come to to drilling for there but whenever you're tightening hopefully you've already done the fuselage bit by now but whenever you're tightening any uh, nut and bolt on a tube you know you're not sending it home as hard as you can it's very easy to crush that tube um, and once it goes it will go very very slack you know and you'll be thinking oh it must tighten up at some point so just con just be mindful uh, when you're tightening up those nuts not to be crushing those tubes or even to start putting in flat dents um, when you tighten a flat washer against a round tube it's very easy for it to, to pull in and these are the problems that you won't get straight away these are the problems that you'll pick up two three four hundred hours um, down the line when it's had time to settle vibrate and and you know the the uh, the pressures and stresses of being in the air uh, start working its way I have a number of hints that I recommend I always always lock tight so don't forget your lock tight and I also use a paint pen now this is not um, a crack um, or anti tamper uh, paint this is literally just a paint pen and so when I know that I've done that nut up uh, and that bolt up I'll mark it so that I know not uh, you know that I know that I'm happy for uh, to proceed so then when I cast my eye over uh, the wing and I don't see a paint pen then I know to go and check to make sure that's right and I would only mark it up uh, once I am happy with it uh, it's also a lot easier then for the inspector to be looking around and going right okay I know he's happy with that um, yeah, so it's it's a nice visual aid. Okay, so that's all the bolts are now tightened up. I've marked all the nuts um, so that I know that they've been tightened up. The next thing we need to do is a little bit of adaptation, a little bit of prep uh, for what we need to do next time. So there, first of all, are a number of brackets that we need to fix in place. And these are these brackets that are here. So. This bracket is meant to go across this leading edge tube to stop this from rotating. So when you put these into the wing skin, the entire thing folds in so that this tube will come back on itself so that you can then push uh, the uh, frame into the skin. But what you don't want is to this bracket to rotate in the process. So this needs a, just a gentle tweak. We then need to drill a hole and then rivet it in place. Exactly the same with the bracket that's down this end here as well. So this will need to be lined up so that it's nice and square. We'll do a slight tweak on this to make it nice and flush. Then we can drill it and rivet it. Okay, so if you've been reading in the manual, one of the first things it says refers to certain saddle washers shown in figure 414. So I can just find that uh, figure for you. It says that it might foul with the brackets. So this is on the um, trailing edge tube, which is this one. And it's these this saddle washer that's here. So this is where the rear attachment bolt, uh, fuselage bolt will go to hold the, uh, the rear uh, trailing edge. And the bracket may foul on this saddle washer that's here. So it says it needs to be cut down or shaved down 
right by around about two to three mil. So we're going to whip this off. Uh, Alan's sitting over there pretending like he's having a brew, so I'm going to make him f <laughs> file off two to three mil so that it fits nice and snug. So another thing that's uh, recommended to be altered is the threads protruding on this particular bolt that's here. So understanding on how the wing skin is going to go onto this uh, wing frame is that obviously the tension is coming around this leading edge with the former and so this bolt here can quite easily and does rest on the skin fabric that's there so over, the, over time with all of that rubbing uh, that goes here you run the risk of damaging the skin uh, maybe even puncture it or cause a rip so it recommends in the manual that you uh, cut off grind down a, a number of threads so the minimum amount is just protruding uh, through that top end so we've mopped this up this was one that we didn't lock tight uh, on the first time round so that we could get an accurate measurement of where we want it to be if you did grind it off at this point, don't forget that that heat will melt the nylon. So make sure you change the bolt uh, if you go for the grinding option. What we're going to do is we're going to drop this bolt out. We're going to take it into the machine shop and we're going to uh, <clears throat> pop it in the lathe and just turn it down. Get rid of um, about, two, about two threads there. And there we go. Much better. So it's important when you're putting this back together again that you remember the correct orientation. And so you put the aluminium saddle washer, then a plastic washer, then the cable, another plastic washer. And this is where you can really make life hard for yourself. This is key weight. And so when this goes in here, there is a tensioner bar that you put in and it's important that this flat space is there so that it can slot in. If you do it the other way, it makes life near on impossible to do it. So make sure that's that way. Ah, okay, so now we've got the cables fitted both ends with the adjustments that we needed to do. What I do is take this bar now uh, and this is the tensioner. And you'll see there are two holes and they're not all the way through, they're just on one side. Uh, with a nut and bolt on this side that goes this end Find the locating slot there and this is where you'll see you need a little bit of movement in there and this is why it's important to get that the right way because that just slots in there now once that's done we can add a little bit of tension on this turnbuckle and we can start seeing it all taking shape you see the main brace cable there it's just picking up and we're doing this because we're going to make an adjustment on this heat shrink that's here and so if you haven't placed it already this will uh, be free so you want to make sure that it uh, that it covers both sides then we can go ahead and just heat that up to secure it in place we also want to get some prop tape so a nice solid thick tape just to sit under there where those cables may touch uh, either resting or in flight so that's what we're going to do next and then we'll get on with more prep okay so we've turned the wing over now so this is the underside so this is where the underside skin is just so we can take a look at this bracket and this is where um, the more heftier wing wire cable uh, attaches through and straight away you can just see how chunkier it is there's this addition of this bracket uh, which is here and there's a, changes all of the spaces um, to a completely well, I say similar but completely different design so there's an additional bracing that's gone in here so if you're used to your normal uh, wing there's probably uh, two of these one that's here and one that's there with this spacer 
Uh, and this is the one that would be where your uh, front strut would attach. But you can see this is a, a, a longer uh, bolt, uh, a lot heftier bolt. Uh, nylon space that's in there, two washers. Now this came from Flylight configured in. I can see that it's been Loctited in. Uh, I've had a quick tweak on it to make sure that uh, it's not uh, uh, loose. But also the orientation of the bolts um, is different. So if you try putting these in the wrong way, this nut uh, and the threads would be touching this. So it's in a different orientation than you normally would be. This bracket itself is huge, a proper monster bracket there, you know, and you certainly compare that uh, to the other side. Let's get my rule on here. You can see it's a much chunkier bracket, around about a four mil bracket there. So bits, if you were looking to be upgrading your wing, it would be this bit that would need to be changed and that chunkier cable that's there as well. So you can see there's quite a significant um, amount that's gone into uh, into the wing side there, all of which is very, very doable, but again, certainly worth factoring um, in mind when you're looking at upgrading your Ninja um, to go to the 600. Let's go take a look at the other side. So on this side, this one didn't come uh, pre-made up. This one has come mocked up. Now, straight away, I'm asking myself questions on whether this um, is actually right, because in theory, this one should fit there. This is the rear um, strut that should be attached onto that bolt there. So we need to generate a space for that. So I'm going to just have a quick consult of the manual to see how it should look. Now looking at the picture in the manual, you can see that it's actually a little bit different. So this is the I manual for those who are looking. So what I'm gonna do is, just gonna count up washers, uh, have a closer look at this manual and looking at mocking it up correctly. So that looks about right to me. The spacing seemed correct on a line, so I'm going to lock tight these in place. Now leave this one uh, loose, because obviously you don't want to lock tight that one in place, but these ones can go ahead and be fixed at this time. Okay, so we're all mocked up now. The only issue I had was another washer needed adding on this rear bolt we just reached the end uh, of the threads there which I wasn't happy with so looking back uh, on the picture it looks like we I need to add another spacer on there another uh, so it did mean taking this nut off and that nut off so that we could slide the bolt out without scratching the tube so for the cost of two new nuts Get rid of those and now we can mark these up. So the only thing we've got left to do now is, at this stage is to put a plastic tape um, as a corrosion, moisture, uh, friction barrier across all the areas that are going to touch the skin. So we're going to do a full run down the trailing edge. We need to go on the wing look side we need to do these brackets here we also need to go down the leading edge um, so I'm just going to make sure we're happy with everything and the first thing I'm going to do is remove these eyelets here you see I haven't fixed these in place uh, at all yet so we're just going to pop these out to make life a little bit easier for us okay so now we've uh, run the um, plastic tape around the leading edge, uh, the wing tip and the trailing edge, we can go ahead and fit the eye bolts. Now, the last three we're not gonna do. So this one, this one and this one, we're going to leave for the moment in time 
This is what the ailerons uh, fit to. So we're just going to leave these in mock up because what we're going to do is fit the aileron to this uh, to make sure that the uh, the cables line up perfectly um, with the ailerons. So we're not going to fix these because if they need a little bit of tweaking, now would be the time to do it because you can't get to these nuts once the wing skin is on. So we're going to leave these three, this one, that one, and the one behind me. Um, we'll just go ahead and fit the flap ones. So don't forget your lock tight. Now don't tighten these up. Don't just send them home because you will cross the tube. What you want to be able to do is still get some element of movement on them because you might need some small tweaking. So I use a, a number one screwdriver just in there. And again, tightening up just so I've still got some play in there. Um, yeah, you don't want to be too tight on there. So as afternoons go, it's been quite a busy one. Um, it's been great uh, to get it out of the box, make sure everything's okay and get it mocked up, make sure everything was okay. If I was to give you any advice, do mock up first. Um, especially if this is your first time building a wings, they can be quite confusing. Read the manual and read it again, and then read it one more time. Um, even you know when you've done this a few times you know you can still make mistakes so it's it's make sure all the washers are in the right place and everything runs even cables are in the right orientation yeah it's very easy to make a mistake so before you start doing any permanent fixings um, yeah just make sure that you are 100% happy uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing the new beefier uh, wing parts because I was certainly massively impressed. You know, this cable here is super impressive and the bracket on this end. So yeah, uh, next phase for us on this wing, we're gonna look at fitting the aileron and running the aileron cables and making sure that they're okay and running right. If we do need to make any alterations, now will be the time to do so. So yes, um, two halves ready for ailerons. Hopefully we can also look at getting the skin on soon because that would be double awesome. Um, okay, until next time we're on the wings, see you later.